So this was just a very uh, short and not complete uh, recap on what I did and I just showed you bits and pieces and sometimes I didn't film for days and days on end but I hope it gives you a overview on what I did and how long it took me and all the work I put in. So I took out all the flooring, all the bolts and all the uh, cladding on the side. So this is now a blank canvas basically which I can start converting and here you can see those were the big holes and I had my mechanic in town uh, welded and it's already coated I think too so you can see there were quite a few spots all over here that he did for me and yeah that's how it looks from the inside now Hey guys, it's been another week or so and I just wanted to share with you the progress on the van because as you can see I've got some wooden sideboards installed and I got a nice beautiful wooden floor and I treated both last night so it now smells very nice and yeah let me show you around what else is new. So. This was kind of meant as a subflooring, you know, this is not proper, proper uh, flooring. And I found some free stuff online, like old real wooden panels that I could put on top of this. But actually, I really like this. So I think I'm just gonna keep it. And I treated it, so it's uh, waterproof and everything. And I really do like it. And these are the wooden panels, they're a little bit thicker than the old cardboard ones, but I used the same and with some new board. Uh, yeah, they're not screws, they're boltish kind of things, but they work. So these are now rigid and they look a lot nicer than before. As a memory, uh, the ceiling is still the same and I think I'm gonna keep it. Maybe I'm gonna paint over it, but I really just don't want to bother with taking down the ceiling and doing this. And FYI, I did not insulate anything in the van because first reason, this is just licensed until October and then I need to do a lot of things again, which I don't plan to do. I need to look for work over winter anyway. So this is a pure summer traveler's car. And yes, I know you can insulate for summer heat as well and so the car doesn't get as hot anyway but look around it's fully windowed and although I'm probably gonna cover the back windows and just keep the two in the front and one in the back it's still gonna be these are not insulated windows it's just normal car windows it's gonna be hot nevertheless anyway I can't insulate here probably I would have to insulate the roof as well would have to take the roof panels down I would have to insulate the floor before as well. It's just a lot more work, a lot more money that I don't want to bother spending. I want to get on the road as soon as possible. So I'm not doing it this time, but obviously maybe my next van conversion or even this vehicle uh, next year or so, obviously some uh, insulation would be nice, but not this time. So I screwed these floor panels down, there's some more screws, and there's the big ones in the back. And that's actually where I'm gonna fix maybe a small cupboard, because I need a place to put my spare battery, or not spare, but like the secondary battery, and water canisters and uh, gas cooker and stuff like that. So I plan to build a small cupboard here that's gonna be also fixed with these screws to the floor. And as I said last time, I'm just gonna fit a huge big platform um, with a huge big bed and maybe that's gonna end up in some seating here and maybe a folding, uh, folding table here so I can actually sit there as well and I have like a little table at least. But this is a lot easier than actually building a uh, a whole cover to the side and a bed that slides out or folds out or whatever so just having a huge platform here also means that I have more storage than I would origi originally had with my plans because I'm just gonna buy some plastic or wooden boxes and I have bags and stuff like that I'm just gonna throw everything 
under the bed and I'm fine. So that's my plan. I also repaired this one because that was completely broken. I fixed some uh, plastic cover to these uh, to these ones. This one was here before, but the other one you can see I glued in. It's not not really the right one, but I, <laughs> I fixed it in nevertheless. This is now repaired. Also, I had the uh, signal horn for the car reinstalled because it didn't have one. And legally in Germany, you're not allowed to use one, but you ought to have one. <laughs> so. Uh, I'd rather have this done now than later and, and have some problem with the police or whatever. And you know, if you're traveling abroad and there's just road circumstances you're not used to and I'll be driving on the British Islands and left-hand traffic, I'm sure there will be some uh, honking necessary. <laughs> I also fixed this thing down because it was completely loose. Same with this plastic cover, there was, I mean it's still loose but it's way better than before. I also fixed these windscreens because uh, I don't have a ceiling fan. I don't have any kind of ventilation. None of the windows in the back are open. So the only kind of ventilation for sleeping in all of that is I'm getting when I'm open these front windows. So I have these windscreens now, so even when it rains, uh, there's nothing coming inside. Those are on both sides and that's going to be my improvised uh, ventilation because, again, I don't want to touch the roof and I don't want to uh, install a roof fan as well. I'm not sure if I showed it to you before, but this sliding door had a huge gap, huge hole right here. So I could stick my hand, my whole arm in there and see into the inside of the van. So I didn't, didn't even ask him to do it, but my mechanic also fixed this uh, plate, bolted it, I think. So now I'm gonna figure out how to uh, make this watertight and seal it and then also spray it with paint of course but another thing that has been fixed but yeah that's that's really about it this is the update so far um, obviously the net next steps uh, because now the vehicle is basically all repaired it's all good to go I have a this blank canvas now with the floor in the side panels in I can do whatever I want now with this uh, with this empty space and that's just what I plan to do. Maybe I need some more cleaning and also two big more things are the electrics. So fitting the solar panel on the roof, drilling a hole for that, doing all the wiring, um, which is not much. I mean I just need some lights on the ceiling and an inverter and everything installed next to the battery. And I also need um, to take care of the rust or at least I want to take care of the rust. I mean it's no big issue uh, I just wanted to look a little bit nicer and maybe stop rusting too. So because the weather today is nice, I'm actually going to do that probably. So and there's obviously always many little things that need to take care of and also I took care of many little things I didn't show you this time. It's just those bits and balls and here's the screw loose and there's something missing and you, you try to refit it with something else you find in your dad's workshop. So, yeah, that's about it for now, and see you probably next week again. Good morning, guys. It's another beautiful day, and great weather means I have lots of time to work on the bus. I just wanted to quickly show you the progress from the last two days, which, as you can see, involved mostly electrics and wiring and battery stuff. So, let me show you. So, the first and most complicated thing I did uh, the past two days was to set up this second battery. This one is connected through this wire to the uh, starter battery and this relay right here does the job with this signal cable here um, that only when the engine is running this is actually uh, connected. So only when the engine is running this battery is being charged as well and if the engine is not running, this is disconnected. So I can charge my phone, uh, laptop, camera batteries, everything, use the lights, the interior, um, have this power inverter here, so I actually have a real power plug, hopefully. Um, so I can discharge this battery basically fully without discharging the battery in the front. So I can still start the vehicle, I can still drive around, 
even if this is empty. The big problem I had was finding an actual signal from the engine, from the uh, power generator from the engine, uh, that tells this relay to shut or not shut. So the guys in the internet, uh, like the pin I used first, didn't work. There were only two volts on there and I just used another one that actually has 12 volts so now it's working. Not sure where I connected it to but it's it's working just fine, okay. And so I'm not complaining <laughs> even if it's not properly done. What I have done however is secured everything with fuses. So there's an 80 amp fuse right here uh, between the spare, the second battery and the relay. And there is a fuse in uh, the engine room. And here you can just see how everything is uh, fixed to the uh, to the vehicle itself. So that's minus for you. So next thing on the list and what is my job today is to fix this sonar panel right here which I just covered so it's not producing uh, too much energy. Um, to fix that to the roof, no idea how to do that. To connect it to this uh, solar charging uh, like micro-controlled, whatever. So power is going to come in here from the solar panel, going to charge the battery and all my um, electronics are also going to, into this. So this little thing is also taking care of that my battery is not being discharged too much. Again, I have fuses for this whole system so everything should be secure and not blow up my van or burn it to crisp, hopefully. Um, but I'm by no means an electrician and please, please don't take this as a guide how to do this. Uh, there is good guides and good YouTube videos from other great people here. Uh, please look them up. I'm no expert. I'm doing this for the first time ever. I'm just showing you what I'm doing, maybe giving you some, uh, some ideas, but nothing more really. So please don't take this as a guide. There you can see the holes I drilled yesterday, where the power cables from the uh, solar panel are coming in. They're going to get in here and through the frame, hopefully down here. And of course there's the lightning I have to fix. I mean, this is just from the vehicle itself, that's I'm not going to use. So I bought my own lights that I want to use, those I have to fix up. And yeah, so that's the plan for today. And I think that's enough. Hey guys, one more thing. Uh, the stuff on the roof is going really well. Like, I can fix all the screws and all the, the fittings to actually attach the solar panel to. But I have one problem. Up here, uh, I can't reach to the inside from the outside, which is something I need to do because there's a counter screw inside the van that I need to hold while I screw the actual screw from the outside. So all the other screws were no problem because I could reach from the outside, there's the sliding door, there's the, the back of the van. But here I can't reach to the inside from the outside. Normally you would ask somebody. So basically I just zip tied this wrench to the roof of the van. So it's actually holding the counter screw and I can work from the outside. I turned this, nothing, nothing worked. So this is where... These. These. This is where you can see the outside, and this is the screw I want to turn and I want to open so I can fix this uh, self made fitting. So, this is going to get here, and then there's this little hole where some wire is going to strap to the middle, I think, um, where I can strap down the solar panel. Obviously, I'm gonna glue the solar panel with this stuff which is really nasty but it lasts for ages um, so I'm gonna glue it down anyway but just for an extra precaution that when I'm driving on the highway with 120 kilometers per hour or something I really don't want this thing to fly off also here you can see the holes from the outside good morning guys I just wanted to give you a very quick update on the latest progress so we have now here uh, the almost finished uh, setup for the electrics. Back there is my uh, consumer battery. Then we have now the solar charger. And we have two light switches. And we have this switch here, which I can use with this key, that enables me to connect the two batteries, so the starter battery and this battery, um, even when the engine is not running. 
that is in case the front battery goes empty or for whatever reason is not working then I can actually start the engine over this battery and here of course we just have an electrical outlet we have two USBs here, two USBs here that is enough to charge all my camera batteries, laptop, whatever also I built this cupboard with a nice hardwood top there's also of course going to be some doors in front of this, there's another one and there you can already see uh, there goes my uh, water jugs and yeah it's just some general storage area and just a small table to maybe cook on or just put stuff on I think that's what the living space really needs so I haven't finished uh, the cabling and the lights and the ceiling is not done yet so that's the next project also I want to clean the space up again after this part of the project I think the next part will be um, building the bed and then I'm almost done then I have to maybe yeah, saw the mattresses uh, so they, they fit into the van lots of small stuff I wanted to do, the rust outside is still not finished so there's still lots of things to do and currently my plan is to leave next Tuesday which is five days from now and I already know that I'm gonna meet up with people on the weekend so I don't think like this this electric stuff took me now so much time and so many days to just figure it out to actually build it and oh, I'm spending like 10 hours a day here but if you've never done this before it's quite complicated to be honest but it works now I think it's safe um, let's hope it actually works for the whole trip hey guys it is really hot summer is here and I'm currently grinding down all the rest rust or sanding down the rust and uh, if you look at this fender it is really not looking too great because it's all rusted through there's like big gaps and holes I have to fill in all of this because getting a whole new part would be way too expensive and yeah I'm just grinding down all the rust to the bare metal and then I'm gonna treat it and then I'm gonna paint it over after filling it in of course but there is more problematic spots that I didn't see as soon as you take any kind of cover off like this doorstep here and there's again just big gapping holes that probably ought to be welded but I'm also just gonna fill them in and put some stuff uh, underneath uh, from the underside uh, to stop water getting in but really this is all there's so many holes and gaps and so much rust and shit. So I'm really not looking forward to doing this on the whole vehicle. I mean, this is probably the worst spot. Uh, but as you can see, this is how it looks afterwards. If you remember, there's a big gaping hole in here. So uh, my mechanic put some metal on top of that. I filled it over and I painted it over. And yes, you can see a color difference. Uh, this ought to be the same color, so I'm guessing this is just old and faded once it looked like this. Uh, it's not pretty, but I don't really care. Uh, you can't stick your hand in there anymore, or your arm. And especially, there's no more water or wind or whatever coming in there. So I'm happy about that. Another progress update is that I uh, put some foil onto the back windows. And if you look on the inside you can actually see that there's uh, the same wood like uh, down here and yeah I think it looks nice now and again I'm checking on the electrics and this cupboard that I built is uh, done but as you can tell I'm currently testing the lights because uh, the voltage is a bit too high like now it's 12.7 volts and this this light seems to be doing okay but this one um, this one is getting really hot especially when the battery is full of it's 14 volts or something but technically it's working the solar panel is charging the battery and when I drive it's charging the battery and uh, there's fuses in between all of those and it's working perfectly. I can charge my laptop here now 
it's just a slight situa situation that I want to um, test before I actually go on the road trip because it would be pretty bad if I can't actually really use it because the lights always go way too hot. So that's a little side project today but mainly I'm doing the outside and the rust because today and tomorrow are the last really sunny days and then it starts raining again and I want to start traveling by the end of the week so I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Good morning guys. I'm sort of four weeks behind schedule but I'm almost done and today's Tuesday and I want to leave on Thursday which means I basically have to finish the van today so I can pack tomorrow and maybe do some other stuff so I can hopefully leave Thursday morning. So I haven't done uh, much filming lately because yeah, I was in a rush and I was just building, 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 but today I remembered, so let me show you the almost done van. Here you can see I fitted some um, reflective foil on the inside, so it's now a little bit like a mirror and you can properly see inside, which is very handy if you want to sleep inside. This cupboard you know, yes, but it is actually constantly working and the solar panel is charging quite nicely. But I now actually fitted the lights. So as you can tell, I have these fairy lights all around and in the middle some blue whitish lights that are not nice, but they just are supposed to make it bright in here. So this is all working nicely. I actually had a completely new front windscreen installed because it had cracks and stuff in it so uh, you probably can tell but it's really nice to drive now and you can actually see through a clear uh, front windscreen. You can also see that I already fitted these because these are later on holding in the curtains. The holes are already drilled and the curtains are in here already sewn at the edges. So this is what I'm going to fix now and after that I'm going to build the bed because that is basically the only thing that's still missing is the bed, some small stuff and the curtains. Also I'm completely done with the paint job so if you remember this uh, wing of the car was completely corroded and uh, everything was rusty. So this whole thing now is freshly painted. There were some minor scratches and things that are painted just with, with a brush. But the big uh, portions I painted with a spray can. So the whole van uh, should look a lot nicer now. No more rusty parts or spots and blank metal. Nothing like that. Good morning guys. As you can tell I'm actually sitting in my van, which means the bed is finally done. Um, you can actually take it out, which is pretty nifty. So just one person and four screws and then you can easily take it out and then you have this huge loading area so you can still use it as a transport vehicle. Um, I also cut the mattress, I also fitted the uh, curtains. Everything is oiled again so it's all nice and shiny and smells nice. Um, I think I showed the lights, of course I cleaned everything, lots of small bits and pieces, the paint job outside is done, um, I don't know honestly, I worked so much that I completely lost track and everything hurts, like my muscles and my whole body are so sore because the last few days I worked like 12-14 hour shifts and well into the night because it's summer and it's it stays bright for a long time here, which is nice, but I am so tired and besides that I have to pack and do the laundry and say goodbye to people and prepare my laptop and uh, clear out the flat I'm living in at the moment and so many things and I'm by far not done. So today I want to start furnishing the van and put things inside and maybe clean the front one last time. Uh, check the spare tire if it needs air or something or even if I can even get it out it might make me rusted uh, shut so yeah there's a lot of things still to do and still goodbyes to say and everything it's just three months but you know people want to say goodbye 
So uh, let me get started and this will probably be the last video on the van conversion itself because I am basically done. I just need to put things inside and get on the road. Um, but there will be most likely a completely separate video where I just showcase the van itself in its finished state with all the equipment inside, like on the road, on the spot, uh, where I can show you all the functions, all the bits and pieces I fitted um, so uh, it's worthwhile living in it on the road. So this was just a very uh, short and not complete uh, recap on what I did and I just showed you bits and pieces and sometimes I didn't film for days and days on end but I hope it gives you a overview on what I did and how long it took me and all the work I put in and if you want to know more uh, head to my blog or ask questions down below or just message me and uh, I'll hopefully can answer them.